Hey, welcome to iFlip for Math, MathCast Lesson 9-3, Part 2, Convert Improper Fractions to Mixed Numbers. I'm Mrs. Gooding, and our quote is the same as it was last night, Ben Franklin, an investment, an investment, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. So all the practice you do tonight is really going to pay off in your final score of determining whether you're at a level 3 with fractions, or a 2, kind of still working at it, or a one where maybe you really didn't get it because you didn't put enough effort in. So our learning goal tonight is different. You need to write it down. Use division to convert improper fractions to mixed numbers. Here are our learning goals. Again, we're gonna be identifying the numerator in a mixed number, identifying the denominator in a mixed number, identifying the whole number in a mixed number, and understanding that a mixed number includes both whole numbers and parts of a whole. That's kind of the backside to what we're doing tonight. It's what we did last night. Tonight, we're going to be using division to convert improper fractions to those mixed numbers. So what we did last night, we're now reversing and doing the opposite of. And it's a great way to be able to check whether you did last night's lesson correctly. Same vocabulary as we had last night, so I'm not going to ask you to rewrite it. Just make sure you understand that in an improper fraction, that's when the numerator is greater than the denominator. And remember, that's not a true fraction because a true fraction is always less than 1. In an improper fraction, we have a hidden whole number in there. It could be 1. It could be greater than 1. Um, so be, be the detective and be looking for that hidden whole number. Here's our example, and again, as last night, we're going to do all of our practice problems on the bamboo tablet because it's fraction work, and it's easier to do that way for me and for you. Those are some great pictures of Ben Franklin. If you didn't look at him last night, take a look tonight. He was a super inventor and probably had lots of failures, but he had lots of successes too. We are going to convert 44 sevenths to a mixed number. So here is our example, 44 sevenths. It's definitely an improper fraction because the numerator is a lot bigger than the denominator. That means we have hidden holes. As an example, one hole would be represented by 7 sevenths. That's 7 out of 7 pieces, which means we have one hole. So 44 sevenths is several groups of 7. We find the mixed number by dividing. And if you remember back to our original lessons, this is a division symbol. And this says 44 divided by 7. So we know what to write in the house. 44 divided by 7 looks like this. 44 divided by 7. So now we're just going to work a regular division problem. 7 goes into 4. It doesn't. 7 goes into 44 six whole times. 7 times 6 is 42, and 44 minus 42 is 2. 2 is our remainder. Now, when we're writing this as a mixed number, 6 is our whole number. We don't change that. That stays a whole number. But 2 is a remainder. It's a part of a whole. So we're going to write it as our new numerator. And then we're going to bring this 7 all the way around and write it on the bottom. In other words, our denominator is staying the same. It doesn't change at all unless we simplify, which we're not doing yet. So we have 6 and 2 sevenths. So 44 sevenths is equivalent to the whole number 6 and 2 sevenths. It's kind of cool. Let's try one. We're going to use the green now to show that we're doing some practice problems. So, number one, 15 thirds. We know it's not a real fraction, it's an improper fraction because it's never okay for the number on top to be bigger. I like to think of this kind of as maybe acrobats. If you're an acrobat, you want to have the big strong person on the bottom and you want to have the smaller person on the top like this. That would be a good acrobatic situation. The smaller guy standing on the shoulders of the bigger stronger guy. 
But in this case, we've got a guy that's a lot bigger on top. And that's improper. So we jokingly say we're going to, we kind of actually, we even could talk about like cheerleaders. So here's the cheerleader who jumps on top. And here's the little tiny cheerleader on the bottom. And she's like, oh my gosh, that's not okay. And the coach says, you can't do that. So she still does it. She jumps on top. So the coach says, you have to go home. So she goes home into the house. And that's a good way of remembering who goes into the house. Now the little cheerleader comes along and she's like, oh, I've got to go talk to her. I don't want her to feel badly. So she goes and knocks on the door and she's going to go into the house. So three goes into 15, how many times? We don't even have to work this out slowly. We know that three times five is 15. We have no remainder. So what do we do in that situation? Well, we have the whole number five. So 15 thirds equals the whole number five. There you go. There are five holes hidden in 15 thirds. Let's try another one. We're gonna use the red pen this time so it stands out. Number two, this one you're gonna pause and push play when you're ready. 23 sixths. Think about the cheerleader story. Think about which number is going to go in the house, which number has to get sent home, and then push play when you're ready. Are you ready? So the bigger cheerleader jumps on the little short cheerleader's shoulders and the coach says, that's not okay. You know that's against our cheerleading rules, so you have to go home. So 23 goes home and six runs over to see how she's doing after practice. So six goes into 23. Six doesn't go into two, but six does go into 23 three times because three times six is 18. Three minus eight, we can't do that. Two minus, we'll take borrow one from that and put it over here. We're really borrowing 10, remember, so instead of Three, we have 13, and 13 minus eight is five. One minus one is zero. So this is our remainder. This is our whole number. So we're gonna write our remainder here, draw our fraction line, and then she's gonna run jump. There she goes. Three and five, six. So as you're writing your answer, make sure you write it out. Three, and five six and box that whole situation. You're still showing your work, but you're gonna box the situation so that we can see it. Number three, let's do it over here. Number three is 43 tenths. Convert that to a mixed number, pause it, and push play when you're ready. Okay. So did you say, ah, that tall cheerleader jumped right on top. Let's send her home. She's got to go to the house. There she is. She's home. And 10's going to run across and see how she's doing. So 10 goes into 43. It doesn't go into 4. But it does go into 43 four times because 4 times 10 is 40. I like how we're going back and getting some division review here. 3 minus 0 is 3, and 4 minus 4 is 0. So we have a remainder of 3. Remember, it's just a little remainder, so we're going to use it as our numerator. It's a little one. And then our denominator is going to run around and stay the same, because whether she's in our improper fraction or whether she's in our mixed number, she stays the same. 4 and 3 tenths equals... 4 and 3 tenths. I'll write it like this since we didn't leave much space for that. There we go. Try some more of those. Go back to last night's problems and see if you can convert them back to mixed numbers from improper fractions. And likewise, just flip them back and forth. It's a great way to check to make sure you got your answer right before you turn it in. It's time to challenge yourself. Everybody can do this. If you can divide three digits by two digits, you can do this. And we don't have anybody that can't do that in class. So go ahead and practice it. Convert 124 fifteenths to a mixed number. Do you hear when I say fifteenths? I'm putting that THS ending 
Remember, it's just like a decimal. That means it's a part. It's not a whole number. It's a part. 124 fifteenths. Again, why is it called an improper fraction? You don't have to write this down tonight, but I want you to make sure that you remember it and that you could explain it to a friend in class. Show your work and explain your answer in your flip journal, and we will check it tomorrow. Finishing up, go ahead and review your learning goals. Do you know which is the numerator, the denominator, the whole number? Why it's called an improper fraction? Why it's called a mixed number? Could you convert both of them back and forth? If you can, write down a three right here in your level of learning. If you still make a few mistakes, write down a two. And if you're still struggling, put down a one. And then make sure you write down any questions you have because if you're at a one, you should have questions. Improper fractions, you've completed lesson nine dash three, part two, converting improper fractions to mixed numbers. Hopefully I will get to see you tomorrow.